We defined chemistry in the first video as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Matter includes things we can see and touch, such as water, earth, and trees, as well as things we cannot, like air. Thus, everything in the universe has a chemical connection. Chemists distinguish among several subcategories of matter based on composition and properties. The classifications of matter include substances, mixtures, elements, and compounds, as well as atoms and molecules, which we're going to take a look at in Chapter 2. A substance is a form of matter that has a definite or constant composition and distinct properties. Examples are water, ammonia, table sugar, gold, oxygen, and many others. Substances differ from one another in composition and can be identified by their appearance, smell, taste, and other properties. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances in which the substances retain their distinct identities. Some familiar examples are air, soft drinks, milk, or cement. Mixtures do not have a constant composition. Therefore, samples of air collected in different cities would probably differ in composition because of differences in altitude, pollution, and so on. All mixtures are categorized as either homogeneous or heterogeneous. When a spoonful of sugar dissolves in water, we obtain a homogeneous mixture in which the composition of the mixture is the same all throughout. So for example, a homogeneous mixture, if you take Kool-Aid crystals and you put them into water, you're going to end up with a homogeneous mixture. You end up with a clear solution, even though it might have a color, it's still clear. So therefore, it's all homogeneous. It's all the same throughout. If sand is mixed with iron filings, however, the sand grains in the iron filings remain separate. This type of mixture is called a heterogeneous mixture because the composition is not uniform. Any mixture, whether heterogeneous or homogeneous, can be created and then separated by physical means into pure components without changing the identities of those components. Thus, the sugar or Kool-Aid could be recovered from the water solution by heating the water or heating the solution and evaporating it to dryness, and you'd be left over with the Kool-Aid crystals. Condensing the vapor will give us back the water component. To separate the iron sand mixture, we can use a magnet to remove the iron filings from the sand because sand is not magnetic. After separation, the components of the mixture will have the same composition and properties as they did when we started. Another example of separating mixtures by physical means is distillation. So here you have a mixture of two or more types of liquids with different boiling points and then you heat them. That's what this is right here. This is some kind of hot plate. So you heat those up and whatever liquid has the lower boiling point is going to vaporize first. It's going to go up this piece of glass tubing right here. Then it's going to hit this condenser. The condenser is at a cooler temperature than air. And then what's going to happen is when the vapors of the lower boiling liquid, when they hit the condenser, they're going to condense. They're going to be converted into a liquid. And then you can collect the lowest boiling fraction, so to speak, of this mixture down here. So that's what distillation is. Substances can be either elements or compounds. An element is a substance that cannot be separated into simpler substances by chemical methods. Today, around 118 elements have been positively identified. Most of them occur naturally on Earth. The others have been created by scientists via nuclear processes, which are the subject of another chapter. For convenience, chemists use symbols of one or two letters to represent the elements. The first letter of a symbol is always capitalized. It's always an uppercase letter, but the following letters are always lowercase. For example, CO is the symbol for cobalt, whereas if I was to have C capital O, that's the formula for carbon monoxide, which comes out in your car's exhaust. This table shows the names and symbols of some of the more common elements. The symbols of some elements are derived from their Latin names. For example, AU for gold comes from the Latin word aurum. Iron has the symbol FE, which comes from the Latin word ferrum for iron. 
And sodium has the symbol Na, which comes from natrium, which means sodium. Whereas most of the other ones come from English names. It's important that you familiarize yourself with all the names and the symbols of all of the elements in this figure. For example, aluminum found in things like baseball bats. Arsenic is sometimes used as a poison. Barium. Bismuth. Bismuth is found in things like Pepto-Bismol. Bromine. Calcium. Of course, you know that calcium is found in your bones. Carbon is one of my favorite elements because um, the study of compounds that contain carbon is organic chemistry, and I'm an organic chemist by trade. Chlorine. Chromium. Cobalt. Copper. Of course, you've probably seen copper pipes that are used in plumbing in houses. Fluorine, notice the spelling that it's F-L-U-O, not F-L-O-U. It's not flowering, it's fluorine. Gold, hydrogen, you've probably all heard of the Hindenburg, which was an airship, and it was filled with hydrogen, which is lighter than air. Then it caught on fire and exploded in uh, Lakehurst, New Jersey a long time ago. Iodine, iron, lead, magnesium, and manganese. Sometimes students will mix this up. So magnesium is M-G, manganese is M-N. Mercury, nickel, nitrogen, which is the major component found in air. Oxygen is found in air, but to a lesser extent than nitrogen. Um, phosphorus, platinum, potassium, silicon, silver, sodium, sulfur, tin, tungsten, and zinc. Again, a good idea to familiarize yourself with all of these commonly used elements' names as well as their atomic symbols. Atoms of most elements can interact with one another to form compounds. Hydrogen gas, for example, burns in oxygen to form water, which has properties that, that are distinctly different from those of the starting materials. Water is made up of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. The composition doesn't change no matter where the water comes from. Thus, water is a compound. A compound is a substance composed of atoms of two or more elements chemically united in fixed proportions. Unlike mixtures, compounds can be separated only by chemical means into their pure components. The relationship among elements, compounds, and other categories of matter are shown in this figure here. So we have all of matter, which can be categorized into mixtures or substances. Mixtures can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous, and we discussed that already. We can take a mixture and we can separate that by physical methods, just like the iron filings in sand or by the distillation that we looked at. And substances can either be compounds, which are substances composed of atoms of two or more elements, chemically united in fixed proportions, or they can be pure elements.